Hi there, Mouseketeers. A trip to Disneyland is an unforgettable experience, but it is also a somewhat confusing and pricey proposition for anybody. And we understand it can be hard to have fun if you are spending more money than you are comfortable with. We here at the Disneyland Beat are experts at having a great time at the parks and not breaking the bank. And we want to share our hints and tips with you. These tips are going to be particularly helpful for you folks visiting for the first time. So stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where we tap our toes to a Disneyland drum and we always whistle while we work. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications about future videos. Well, hi there, Mouseketeers. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. How long to visit? We here at the Disneyland Beat recommend a trip of at least two to three days to fully experience the Disneyland resorts. Our favorite lineup for first-time Disney lovers on a budget is three days total. Two days at Disneyland Park and one day at Disney California Adventure. It simply takes at least three days to experience everything the park has to offer. Tickets do get cheaper if you stay longer, but if you're trying to save money, we don't think it's worth it to stay extra days. The additional hotel and incidental cost of staying extra days add up too quickly. Tickets. This is a large expense with few discount options to be had, and almost none that are significant. There are occasionally specials. Keep an eye out for offers on Black Friday or the spring. Sometimes there are some okay deals, but it can be really difficult to predict when they are coming. More consistent, there are a few websites that offer discounts. If you search around on Google, you'll find them. But these are mostly pretty minimal discounts. But you might as well get a few bucks off, right? And daily ticket prices depend on how many days you are purchasing. Three days gets the cost of the visit under $100 per day, and it gets you a magic morning, allowing you a morning where you will get into the park an hour early. We do recommend getting one park a day tickets and not paying for park hopper tickets that allow you to go to both parks in a single day. You won't miss too much here. Make sure you do get tickets before you get to the parks though, so you don't have to wait in line twice. We are not going to address how you are going to travel to Disneyland in this video. Look for information on traveling to Disneyland in future videos. We are going to talk about where you are going to stay. Hotels. There are several key points you want to consider when picking a hotel for Disneyland. Number one, price and walking distance. Pick a hotel that is within walking distance. The three hotels on Disney campus are nice, but super expensive at over 300 a night, so we won't be talking much about them. They have amazing experiences, but nothing that compares to the parks. Luckily, you can stay off campus at Disneyland and still have a short walk. In fact, sometimes a shorter walk than the most affordable on-campus hotels. We recommend looking at hotels on Harbor Boulevard, near the Esplanade between the two parks. This center point between the two parks is the entrance for all foot traffic. Harbor Boulevard hotel prices seem to go up every time Disney raises their prices, but they currently rest around $110 to $200 a night. If you book far in advance and look for discounts online, you'll get a good deal. There are at least a dozen large hotels within easy walking distance. Generally speaking, the further away you get from the park, the more it costs. We, re we recommend staying as close as possible though, as every step makes a difference at the end of three days. And if you're staying late in the park, you will want to feel safe on your walk back to the hotel. With the hotels in walking distance, you may not even need to rent a car if you fly, but rather Uber or shuttle to your hotel and walk the rest of the time. Number two, amenities. Most of the affordable hotels on Harbor Boulevard do not have a kitchen, so considering what food options you have close by become a reality once you get here. The best is if you have a restaurant on site, like the Howard Johnson's or the Anaheim Hotel, but something right next door can be just as good. We do suggest you check out Yelp though. Restaurants on Harbor are a bit hit or miss. Having a hotel that has a free continental breakfast is super nice. We find we're usually too excited for a heavy breakfast and we want something we can grab and go so we can just get into the parks. This usually helps save some money too. Most hotels have a pool, but not all are created equal. Some are inside and some are huge pools like the Howard Johnson's and quite elaborate. Or some are big like the Olympic sized Anaheim Hotel. Some hotels are nicer than others, and some are closer. You generally get what you pay for, and the online reviews are fairly accurate if you go with majority rules. 
We've never had a problem at any of the hotels we have stayed at, and the staff has always been great. For a three-day trip like this one, we see the hotels as more of a place to sleep anyhow, and we spend all of our time in the parks. Parking is not created equal at the hotels. Everybody has a fee, but some have the ability to let you come early before you check in and stay the whole day after you check out, so you can get in another park day. Well, some do not offer that. Some have valet, others don't, so be sure to ask the rules when you book. However, chances are it will be cheaper than the $25 a day you're going to get charged to park at Disneyland, so it's a pretty good deal for that. Go to a grocery store. This is a must for the budget conscious. You will want water. Okay, there are places to get in the park for free, but we have all found it is so convenient and time saving to just carry some with you at all times, especially when you have kids. Snacks and lunch food. Some fresh fruit. You can bring food into the parks and we recommend eating lunch back at the hotel at least once. You will also want to do some late snacking at least one point during your trip. Go to a grocery store on your way to the airport to the park as there are no good grocery stores within walking distance. We at the Disneyland Beat recommend Vons or Albertsons grocery store near Garden Grove, which is only about two and a half miles. The closest ones are Walmart Express and a Target or a CVS and we usually pass those by. Rain in your spending on your trip. Easiest way to do this, we think, is to create a budget and stick to it. You might try doing this by using store cards, such as Target, so you could get a Target card and then you could purchase Disney gift cards at a slight discount, 5% discount, and then you could spend those Disney gift cards while you're at the park and stick to using those Disney gift cards. Uh, there is also a Disney Chase credit card that has a $200 gift sign-up bonus. So if it's your first time, your first trip, you might consider getting this card. You could even cancel it afterwards. Uh, and there's various places in the park where you can get a 10% discount with that card as well. Plus it gets you into some character meet and greets you might not otherwise get into. You can also just use cash. Create a budget and bring cash and bring cash into the park and spend that and don't overspend on your cash. With our kids, uh, a lot of times we'll uh, have them save up on their allowance knowing they're going to get, uh, get to spend a portion of their own money on the trip on souvenirs or experiences all for themselves. And speaking of souvenirs, we suggest you should try to avoid buying souvenirs. Number one, if you're going to buy souvenirs, you might pre-plan and budget for them. So research uh, what you want and see if you can get it outside of the parks and if you can't and you know you want it it's, it's that thing you have to have that's in the park you have to build a droid at the droid depot plan for that one large expense and then stick to the plan number two go for all the free or under a dollar souvenirs Disneyland has a bunch of these uh, like fast pass tickets Autopia licenses press pennies Jungle Cruise and Pirates Lair maps free buttons from town hall and cast members, free stickers. Uh, if you get something with your food, like a glow drink cube, you can keep that. And then pin trading. A lot of people don't know about pin trading. So there's lots of stores that have displays where there are Disney pins and you can trade those pins. You can take a pin of yours, put it there if it's a real Disney pin and then take that other pin or you can trade with cast members who are wearing pins. And then there's other various people who might be selling pins or trading pins in the park. And that's a, more of a negotiation thing. But the other things, uh, that, that all just happens. And we suggest hitting up eBay for a bundle of pins at a low cost and then take all the pins that you don't like into the park so you can trade them for pins that you do want. Don't go and buy a bunch of pins that you really like because then you won't want to trade them. So uh, buying pins one by one in the park is very expensive. They can be 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 20, whatever. Uh, go on and on as their collector items. Uh, very expensive to buy. So, But if you buy a bulk load it on eBay for $10, then you can, you can spend an entire trip trading pins. Number three, bring your own souvenirs. If you have kids, Bring toys that you know they will want to help with the inevitable. At some point on the trip, if you've never been to Disneyland, they're going to ask you for a bubble toy because Disney uh, sells bubble toys and the other kids are going to be walking around with them and they're really a lot of fun. So bring bubbles with you. Uh, at some point at night, they're going to want some kind of light up toy 
to walk around the park with, and Disney has all these spinners. So uh, in the past, we've just hit the dollar store and bought some light-up fairy wands, and the kids were super happy, busted them out. Um, I've seen parents buy official Disney gear off-site and then dole it out to their little ones throughout the trip, and I think it's brilliant. Number four, shop at the hotel gift shop. You can usually find many similar items in the hotel gift shop for half the price. So that's another good reason to save money by staying off site, but you're gonna get those mini ears for $10 at the hotel gift shop and you know, they're $30 in the park. Okay, we know this is about saving money, but buy Max Pass anyway. All right, this is the only Disney add-on we suggest you consider. We don't get it for every day of our trip, maybe, but just on select days when we're at the park. So if we were doing two days at Disney and a day at California Adventure, we'd get it for at least one day that we were at each park, um, different park. It costs $15 per person per day. Um, and as we'll uh, discuss in our next video, it really is a time saver as far as riding all the rides that you're trying to ride in a, in a day. So you really want to budget this one in. Uh, along with Max Pass comes free PhotoPass downloads for that day. So that means uh, every picture that's taken by a Disney photographer or a ride system that day, you get to keep that, download that. If photography is important to you and you don't want to rely on your phone uh, to take pictures, consider purchasing Max Pass. It's another reason to do it anyways. If you do buy Max Pass, make sure you do go to every single photographer that you see in the park and you have time for and get as many you know, great high quality photos as you can. Limit your eating in the park. This one can be tough, and it just depends on what's important to you, and many see the park as a foodie vacation as much as anything else, so if it's important uh, to you for that, then you should go spend money on food. But um, if otherwise, it can be a very expensive proposition. So we agree these park meals are super tempting, but if you're looking to save money, limiting your meals in the park can go a long way. Well, number one, only do one table service dinner per trip, at most. So uh, think very hard about which place it is you want to see on this trip and go to, go to that one. So any table service meal is a treat at Disneyland and we recommend. So if it's your first time, I'm just going to recommend get a World of Color or a Fantasmic. We, we tend to be Fantasmic fans here, uh, a viewing uh, package. So the cost is not going to be that much higher than the meal really is alone. And the select seating for the nighttime spectacular is worth it. Number two, bring your own snacks or meals into the parks. So the Dole Whips and the popcorn and the corn dogs all add up. Bring your own snacks into the park to avoid these costs. There are tables all over the park, little picnic tables all over the park that you can stop and eat. Uh, or any table at any counter service restaurant, you can just go ahead and sit down and eat your own meal. But um, some are made just for picnicking. Uh, like the tables on Tom Sawyer's Island. Uh, you know, there's no longer any place to buy food on that island. Uh, and uh, there's some cool tables tucked away in Galaxy's Edge in a couple of places. So some really nice places you're able to sit down and have lunch. So bring in your own food and at least bring in your own snacks. Okay guys, the following spots are some of the most reasonably priced meals at the Disneyland resorts. And number one, the cheapest food is found at the snack carts. If you don't need a full meal, the snack carts have lots of offerings under $5 or $10. Um, you know, the Red Wagon on Main Street, those, those corn dogs are a meal to themselves. And, uh, you can get veggie cups or pretzels to Tigger Tails, to chocolate chip strawberries to you know, huge turkey legs. So uh, there's all sorts of food at the snack carts that's pretty reasonably priced. Um, number two, eat at the counter service places and use mobile ordering. I just always recommend use, using mobile ordering. Your, your process will be faster most of the time. Every counter service place in the parks has options starting around $15. And there's a huge variety of different counter service places. You got counter service and table service. So if you eat at the counter service places, you're gonna find some pretty good deals. Number three, don't forget about the counter service options at Downtown Disney. So each uh, place down in uh, Downtown Disney has a table service and a counter service option, usually right next to each other. The prices are fairly similar to what you're gonna get in the park, but a lot of times the quality of the food is much higher and the private companies are vying for your patronage with a little bit higher quality food sometimes, so worth a, worth a walk out there. 
Number four, the hotels have hidden gems. The GCH Craftsman, Craftsman Grill. The GCH Craftsman Grill, let me say that. Formerly, Whitewater Snacks is a local favorite over by California Adventure with uh, low cost, high quality sandwiches. And Trader Joe's at the Disneyland Hotel is a favorite for a drink. And you don't have to be a hotel to, uh, guest to enjoy these venues. So go check those out. So make sure you do everything that is free with your admission ticket. So I think this is a great idea to save money because it's hard for anybody to be overly concerned about missing out on that pricey souvenir meal or Disney add-on when staying busy riding rides, meeting with characters, and seeing shows. Visit every corner of the park, folks. Rest in the beautiful areas and soak in the scenery. Do the full circle on the railroad and, and ride both the Mark Twain and the Sailing Ship Columbia and the canoes if they're open. There's so much to do and so much to love and find the Dis at the Disneyland resorts that there's no reason to have FOMO for not spending money on all the add-ons. Well, that's it for part one of this video, Mouseketeers. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Disneyland Beat so you know about the second part of this video. It's going to focus on how to avoid crowds and get the most out of your Disney vacation. We'll see you real soon, Mouseketeers.